What's up guys, Steve here. We're going to talk about packaging and shipping single cards, graded cards, booster boxes, bulk cards, all that kind of stuff. In this video, you will find links in the description to every single place where I personally buy packaging from. Plus, I will add US links for the sellers in the US. If you are from a country that I haven't mentioned, feel free to leave a comment with great places you buy packaging from in your country. It might help someone else. Before we move on, please remember there will be a lot of eBay links in the description. I highly recommend always searching on eBay for your packaging supplies, finding the right supplies and then going to their website, always linked through either their eBay name, their descriptions, buying it directly from their website. It will always be cheaper. It'll definitely work out in the long run. When it comes to selling cards, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Here's how I ship one to five singular cards at the same time. I use soft card penny sleeves into grading card holders. You can use Ultra Pro. You can use these Palms Off Gaming ones. You can use Cardboard Gold. They're all pretty much the same. These are just called card savers. And then I use a graded card sleeve. Now, it doesn't also have to be this one. There's tons of different brands. Pick whichever is cheapest for you. If you can find the cheapest one, just use those. Usually it's gonna be the best bang for your buck. Here's what the finished product looks like. One card in a sleeve, in the card saver, and then in this graded card sleeve. And the reason why I use these graded card sleeves is it kind of protects it extra from like elements and stuff like that. And you know, it makes it look a little bit more professional when the buyer receives it. Now this type of method for one card is perfect to ship in a plain white envelope. Card savers are really good because they're a little bit rigid so they can bend a little bit while they're in the mailer because they go through mailing machines. It's very common in pretty much every single country. It's why I don't recommend you use top loaders as they do not bend that well. All they do is snap. And if they snap, they're gonna get in the way. The card's gonna get completely damaged and it's not going to go through the machine but card savers trust me i've sent probably over 30,000 singular cards by itself with this exact same method never had a complaint it works perfectly every single time these are the green tracked envelopes we use in australia it's the cheapest way to send a tracked envelope in australia ebay us they have the standard tracked envelope on ebay and then all these other things you can put one stamp on if you don't do untracked perfect for a plain one envelope now if i'm shipping five cards at once and they're all only a few dollars each and it's under 20 dollars, something like that i don't want to put it in a padded bubble mail i don't want to put it through a parcel mail because it does cost extra to ship for the customer and for me it's really easy just to put five cards in one of these psa sleeves and then you put two card savers in between and you create this perfect kind of little sandwich for your cards here this is also another bulletproof method that i've used for a very long time people are usually really happy to receive something like this and the best thing about this is it still stays within the height parameters of a envelope really important now if i'm sending 10 cards and all those cards were one dollar each i would do the same thing i would get two packs of five put them together in this envelope put them next to each other other, and they would sit nice and tight in this envelope. It wouldn't breach any rules. It still goes through the mail system quite easily. This next method is if I'm selling 10, 20, 30 cards and the order value is like $50, $60, $100, $200. And I don't want to put them into an envelope because, you know, I don't want them to be damaged. I don't want to stuff all the cards in an envelope. It's more than one card and it's, it's expensive. And I want the buyer to be and felt respected. I want them to feel respected for when they receive the items. They see how much of a good job I did on shipping and they want to buy from me again. 20 cards, really easy. Into a team bag. Nothing too crazy. These team bags sold all over the world. Go on Amazon. That's where I buy mine. I'll put the link in the description. Chuck them in this one piece of bubble wrap. I'll also have these in the description. Put it into these small boxes. You know, I'm going to have these boxes in the description as well. Then from the box, I put it into another piece of bubble wrap. I will say this extra piece of bubble wrap is a little bit overkill, but it cost me what? 12 cents to buy the buyer's respect is extremely important for me. Then I put them in a courier bag. Now this, you don't need to use a courier bag. You could place it in a bubble envelope, a padded envelope, maybe even into another PW and you could probably ship with two stamps, three stamps, four stamps, depending on where you are in the world. Everywhere is different with all their different laws and rules around postage. Now this is perfect for like 20 cards. Nothing's happened to these. I mean, this is like solid, like a rock. This does not bend. Even if you run over the, with this to the car, nothing's going to happen. Now you wouldn't be surprised if my one graded card shipping method was exactly the same as my bulk card shipping method. Same thing in the black box, in another bubble wrap, in a courier bag. Label on top of the courier bag. I highly recommend using these courier bags because they don't rip very easily. I mean, I'm pulling this apart as hard as I could. It's not coming apart. They don't rip, they don't tear. Labels stick onto these way better than anything else I've ever seen, way better than cardboard. I always recommend use, using these courier bags because they're just so good. Now, the great thing about selling small stuff is you can do the same thing over and over again. So if I was to sell two graded cards and they're a little bit more expensive, all I would do is put two packages worth of these boxes into courier bag, 
and I'll chuck it in. I would use two layers of bubble wrap. You know, they bought two cards. They could have two 12 cents bubble wraps. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't destroy my bottom line and go on with it. Yes, if they are really cheap, sometimes I have been known to put two cards into the bubble wrap. And all this does is just save a little bit of postage. This is still perfectly fine. But some people, you know, if they spend $200 for a Pokemon card, for any trading card, they deserve an extra box. They deserve an extra piece of bubble wrap. Even with two cards in here, right into the bubble wrap, into another layer of bubble wrap, you can never have too much. No one has ever once complained on a feedback and said, I got too much bubble wrap from this seller. It was overkill. No one's ever said that. Into this courier bag, this fifth, this is perfect. I do like using two of these black boxes when people do buy two cards from me, as it makes me not look very lazy, and I just want the person to be happy when they buy from me. Now, let's say you sold six graded cards, eight graded cards, 10 graded cards. You're going to need to put it into a larger box. You can't just like smash it into small little boxes. I'm not going to send 10 small boxes just to send 10 cards. I'll eventually use a box. These boxes I find, in my opinion, are perfect. These are called die cut boxes. They come flat packed and then you kind of like build them yourself and put them together. This one I've already put together and these are amazing. I'm not going to lie, they are a little bit on the softer side when it comes to cardboard, but they're pretty much the cheapest option you can get to get your own ready-made boxes and use them when you can. How I would ship six graded cards at once. Firstly, I put them all two at a time into these tiny little bubble mails. You will see me use this bubble pouch over and over and over again, no matter how many items I ship. We've got seven cards here. I'll show you what that looks like. So firstly, our main goal is to protect the items. When you're selling collectibles, it cannot even be in thought that the item gets damaged during shipping. If it gets damaged during shipping, that's your fault. It's not the shipping company's fault. You already know what's going to happen. You know they're going to stomp on your boxes. You know they're going to run over your boxes with cars. They're going to do all this stuff. So I use so much bubble wrap. If they buy a lot from me, if they spend $500, $1,000, $2,000, they deserve the world. The world's worth of bubble wrap. I use so many layers of bubble wrap when people buy multiple items from me. It doesn't matter. You can use a bubble wrap roll and pull sheets off and cut them yourself or use a perforated bubble wrap roll. I just buy these bubble pouches. I buy a thousand at a time. It costs me 12 cents per bubble wrap. It is worth it for me. That's 60 cents with the bubble wrap in here. And then the small ones, I used four of them. That cost me eight cents each. That's not a big deal. All up, this is $1.20. If I sell seven graded cards and they're $200 each, $1,400, they deserve to be well protected. Use the die card box perfectly in this box. Sticks together. Nothing's happening to these cards inside. There is one extra step you can do. Now, if you're usually shipping stuff that is delicate, you want to be using these courier bags. I can tell you time and time again, I'll put the size of this courier bag in the description also. These courier bags are a godsend. They also eliminate one thing. If you have noticed, I don't use any tape or I use as little tape as possible when I need to. I just, I hate using tape personally. I love using these courier bags as it just eliminates the need for tape. On the front here, the label for the customer will go right there. This will be perfect. This is seven graded cards shaking around. You can't hear anything. It's absolutely amazing. Perfect way to ship something. This is how professionals do it. They use the same materials over and over and over again so they can bulk buy them and get them for as cheap as possible. Here's how I would ship a Pokemon booster box. All these booster boxes, they all come in different shapes and sizes, depending on the language or where it's from, if it's specialty set, anything like that. So maybe this box isn't perfect for an English booster box. There's actually a great video on shipping English booster boxes by TCA Gaming. I'll put that in the description, but here's how I ship my Japanese booster boxes. I put them in a courier bag. And now the reason why we do that is we want to protect the seal. We want to protect the seal of the box. We don't need to tape up the courier bag or use the seal there, but we just want to make sure this is safe. The seal is safe. The customer doesn't get a damaged seal or anything because some people like to keep their booster boxes sealed. We want to protect that seal. We put a little bit of bubble wrap in the box. We get our courier bag and lay it here. Remember these courier bags, they're very cheap. We want to chuck some bubble wrap in on the sides. I just use two small ones and usually another big one for the top. That's when I just close the box up, chuck all that in there. Perfect. You know, maybe put a business card on the top or something like that then this box is perfect. You know, this, this booster box not going anywhere. Then I would always recommend putting it into another courier bag. And this kind of eliminates a few things. These courier bags are great because the postal service workers, you know, they grab them by the courier bag. They grab everything by the courier bag. Plus it's gleaming white. It's easy to see in transit. It's easy to see during shipping. I usually use a hot pink one or I use purple ones or things with like really bright colors that stand out, but I just only have white ones for now. You can use any color you want, but I think courier bags and just using them in general is great for everyone. Put the label on, the label's not gonna go missing. The box inside's perfect. I mean, nothing's happening to this box. It has 19 layers of bubble wrap, 80 cents to maybe a dollar 10, depending on how much and how many you buy from 
a certain supplier that I linked in the description. This is perfect for shipping a Pokemon booster box. It might seem like overkill, but trust me, you get one damaged out of 100 boxes, all your profits gone, your customers are unhappy, and it's not worth skimping on postage supplies. One of the best tips I can give you when it comes to shipping things is save your shipping supplies from when you're buying your items. These little boxes here, I get them from PSA for when I do my submissions. These are amazing. I mean, th these, I would never throw out these boxes. This is like a dollar a box. I'm saving money. This is a DHL shipment I got in. This box is perfect. I'm not going to collapse this box down. I'll reuse it for something. I keep the bubble wrap. I make the package look good. It's super important to save as much packaging as you can. As it's good for the environment, plus saves you a bit of money. So let's say you're shipping bulk cards. You're shipping 400 cards, 800 cards, 1,000 cards, 1,200 cards. You got a lot to ship. Here is how I would do it. And I would always recommend doing something similar as this keeps the cards in the best condition possible. If you have a whole bunch of awesome cards and you have them sleeved up and you want to ship them super safely, you don't want to do what I did and put them all in team bags and stuff like that. Buy some of these. These are 400 count card boxes. So 400 CT card boxes. I'll put some links in the description for these. These black ones are super nice. I like the way they look. But these are just the normal BCW 400 count trading card boxes. And there's thousands of different suppliers that sell this kind of stuff. These are perfect. Pack them to the absolute brim with your single cards and nothing's going to happen to these. Yeah, they don't move. You can get a little bit of bubble wrap in here and just stuff it in there and then close it. And then the cards will, no chance these cards are going to get damaged and they're moving around and stuff like that. It's just perfect. But then we want to keep these cards a little bit safe. So if you want to go the extra mile, mega overkill, put this box in one of these big box, fill the rest with some just random pieces of cardboard or just some more bubble wrap. You know, anything that you have sitting around, put it in some bubble wrap. It doesn't have to be too crazy. These cards are already so well protected. Chuck this in. And then the next thing we do is we put it in the courier bag, like I've shown before many times. If you have a whole bunch of cards that still have a little bit of value, you can get an 800 count box. Place them all into there. If you got like, you know, 2,400 cards, 3,200 cards, get four of these, stack them up together, find a perfect size box, put them in there. That's great. It isn't that cost effective to ship like this as these boxes, they do cost quite a few dollars per box. And if you're shipping like a thousand cards and you're selling them for like $30, it's not really worth it. But let's go into how I would ship a thousand cards. So I have 50 Pokemon cards here and they're not very safe just hanging out by themselves. Here's how I would do it. I would get one of my trusty team bags, put my 50 cards in there, close the team bag up, stuff these down. I mean, you got to be really tight with these because you want them to be uniform. Seal this up on the front there. Sometimes if you put way too many cards in, you'll actually seal onto the cards themselves. You don't want to be doing that. So 50 is the max I would ever put in a team bag. But then you just get 20 of these, 30 of these, depending on how many thousands of cards that you're going to make together. Then you put those into a box, seal them up, put a whole bunch of bubble wrap in there, and then put them into an even bigger box or maybe even a courier bag. And there you have it thousand card ship so if i'm shipping random stuff like maybe i'm selling two plushies i would do the same thing i would just place them in the boxes that i have put a little bit of bubble wrap to fill the excess close them and the thing i love about these boxes in particular is there's no tape i never have to use any tape i never have to waste any time i just close them up put them into the courier bag fold it on itself and then tape up the courier bag with the self seal it's perfect now these boxes are great for also other stuff just like you're selling some notepads the same sort of thing put some bubble wrap in put your notepads in more in bubble wrap now you have noticed that there is a little bit of extra space from each side what you always can do is get some pieces of paper get some cardboard that's ripped off just to fill in the blank space and it will eventually open up and when you close it it creates like a seal between the empty space. It's perfect when you move it around, nothing. No movement whatsoever. You know, you can maybe tape this because if you do shove a lot of paper in, maybe a, one little bit of tape doesn't hurt. But again, you just put this in the courier bag, like I mentioned, it works perfectly. It can't be overstated the importance of proper packaging. Yeah, I use a lot of bubble wrap. Yes, I use specialty boxes. Yes, I spend a lot of money on my packaging supplies, but I want to make the people who buy off me happy. Plus, I want to keep the items safe. These are my items. I want to keep them safe during transit so the person can get them. This package right here was sent to Brazil. It got sent back to me because the buyer never claimed it from their post office. This took four months, so I shipped it. It came back, stuck in post office, got shipped from Australia to Brazil, from Brazil to Australia, long time. The package is all types of messed up. Look at this thing. But inside, my perfect little brown box is perfectly fine. Yes, it has a few crushes here and there because it is cardboard. It's going to crush. If you try to bend this, it's actually still pretty strong. But inside here is one singular card. One singular card. And 
when I ship international packages, it doesn't actually matter how much I do up to 200 grams. So I might as well put a whole bunch of packaging on it. In, inside here, you can see this pretty little dark Gengar, perfectly fine. No creases, nothing wrong with this thing. Perfect to go back to relisting it. Nothing happened to my package. If I shipped it like crap, I just sent in a PWE internationally. I didn't put any bubble wrap, no packaging whatsoever, and the item gets damaged and the person doesn't get it. Well, then I'm just out everything. So you got to understand it's really important to take pride in your shipping. And then a lot of people, they love buying off me because I ship things with such care. I don't half-ass it. I don't use tape. I don't stick the things together. I don't tape top loaders in. I don't tape card savers in. They know when they get their items, they're going to be happy with what they're getting. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Everything that I use is in the description. If you are from a country like UK or you're somewhere in Europe or you're somewhere that I didn't specify during the video, please let me know where you buy your packaging from. I'll get it from the comments and add it to the description. So every single thing and everything people will be needing is in the description and they will learn from it and everyone can learn together and we can all ship stuff perfectly together so every buyer of trading cards can be happy and no one has any more sour grape moments ever again everyone's just happy and we live a happy life how's that so my name's steve if you have any questions always feel free to leave them in the comments otherwise i'll see you in the next one